Hey, it's Mark here from Mark's Astro Journey. In this imaging session, I'm targeting the Sombrero Galaxy or Messier 104. And it's kind of an interesting name they gave to it, Sombrero Galaxy. But it kind of fits when you think about the meaning of Sombrero. In Spanish, Sombra means uh, shadow or shade. And so Sombrero is like literally shadower. And it makes you think of the Mexican hat, right? With the big brim and the bulging part on top, which kind of makes sense when you think about the Sombrero Galaxy because it has this dust lane and we see it kind of on edge and it has the bulging part that you can see that's very bright. So it's really a fitting name when you think about the meaning of Sombrero. So I slewed to M104. So I'm going to do a plate solve and resync. So it's off by 0 0.09 degrees. So we'll let this frame capture and we'll see if it realigns centered. Yep. Looks good. According to Wikipedia, the Sombrero Galaxy has a diameter of roughly 49,000 light years. And that's about three tenths the size of the Milky Way galaxy. I'm going to take the exposure up to two minutes and also start our guiding. Okay, histogram looks pretty good. Guiding looks pretty good. Start a capture on M104. For two hours. Three fifteen AM. Time to take a nap. The equipment I'm using is a Skywatcher one hundred ED APO refractor. And I'm also using a ZWO camera. I do have a field flattener. It's made specifically for this telescope. And as far as the software goes, I'm using SharpCap for the image capture, PhD2 guiding. And then for processing, I'm using AstroPixel processor for the main part of the processing. And then I'm using GIMP to do some final processing on the image that APO produces. So I went on a camping trip this last weekend to a place called Birdsville, Kentucky. It's not far from Paducah. It's also not far from another town called Smithland, Kentucky. And the interesting thing is, where we were camped is on the edge of a, the Ohio River, and it faces south. The campsite faces actually south if you're looking at the river, which for me was uh, kind of tempting to think about going back with my astrophotography equipment sometime because where I live, the southern sky is really blocked a lot by trees. I'll show a couple pictures of what the southern sky looks like and you can see it's a real challenge because a lot of times the targets in the southern sky tracking from um, east to west are lower on the sky. You know, they're not very high up. Here's a quick look at the southern side of the skyline from my property. I'm kind of interested in maybe going back there. It's it's like a three and a half hour drive for me, but it would be a neat place because it's quiet. It's very dark. There's not a lot of city lights there. I'm thinking it probably has a good radio on the portal map. So I'll put up a couple pictures and show what it looks like there compared to what the Southern sky looks like from where I'm living. Okay, put the end cap on, just going to capture some darks. I'm going to go with uh, 20. Studies show that the supermassive black hole at the center of the Sombrero Galaxy 
has about a billion solar masses. They also believe that it's about 250 times larger than the, black, the massive black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy. So it's one of the larger black holes they've discovered in nearby galaxies. Okay, so I'm gonna capture some flats. So I've got the histogram. This is about where I like to see it, about a third of the way over from the left. So I'm gonna go ahead and capture those. I'm gonna go for 200. So the Sombrero Galaxy is on the edge of the Virgo constellation. And another interesting thing on Wikipedia is it points out that um, they used to think that it was a spiral galaxy. But with the Spitzer telescope, they, you know, with a little more detail and investigation, they came to the conclusion it's actually an elliptical galaxy. So now that we've captured our images here in Astro Pixel Processor, I'm going to select my light frames and then select my flats and bias as well as dark frames and then I'll set this to sort by quality and also kick off the um, analyze so that we can start to get an idea of the quality of the frames that were captured. I don't know about you but when you're doing astrophotography sometimes sessions go really well sometimes they don't go so well. So in this imaging session, even though I took uh, 59 frames, I captured 59 frames, there were quite a few issues going on. It seemed to be maybe wind. I'm not sure. I, I checked the cables and everything. I thought I had everything routed well and no snags and the cables velcroed off. But it seems like a lot of frames didn't turn out so good. So you always kind of wonder when you have that happen, if you only have a few frames that are really good, what kind of an image can you get out of that? So I only had like 11 frames you're gonna see that really turned out to be very good. But it's gonna be interesting to see the final image to see how just those 11 frames process and stacked by the image that that produced. So let me know what you think in the comments. So once the analyze is done, I usually go through and select the frames that don't look like they're very good quality visually and remove them from the list and just keep the ones that look the best. And as I mentioned, um, there were only 11 frames that turned out to be really very good frames. So a lot of issues, um, wind, something with the mount, something with the guiding, not real sure, but ended up with those 11 good frames. So I'll kick off the integrate, which will complete all the rest of the automated image processing and stacking, and we'll see how that image turns out in APP. So now that the automated image processing is done, I'm going to adjust the black point, gamma correction, and saturation a little bit. Then I'll um, export the image as like a JPEG and a TIFF format and take a look at it. So I also read that with a four inch telescope, you can see the Sombrero Galaxy, but to really distinguish the bulge from the, the dust lane, you need like an eight inch telescope. And they also say that to really make out the dark line or the dark part of the dust lane, <coughs> you really need like a 10 or 12 inch telescope. So I'm using my 
Skywatcher Evil Star 100 millimeter telescope. So you can kind of see like what you would get with a four inch telescope with this final image. Of course, I didn't have the best imaging session. So maybe with a, a better imaging session, I would get a little bit more detail. But, um, you know, I did go for like two hours. So I'd like to do it maybe for a longer period of time and hope for maybe some better conditions with no wind and uh, see what, what kind of uh, image quality could get even with this telescope. So GIMP will be my last step to try to bring out the most out of the data collected. I'll adjust the blackness, exposure, contrast, brightness, and saturation a little bit more. And then I'll save this out. I usually go for several formats, that way I have a fallback if I have any issue with one of the files. So I hope you enjoyed this video and seeing what I was able to do even in a bad imaging session with the Somero Galaxy. Only got, you know, those 11 frames are really good. And uh, let me know what you think about the image. And also, if you've, you know, used your telescope to image the Sombrero Galaxy, um, I'd like to hear your comments about what difference you've seen. Like, if you have several telescopes between using, like, you know, your 4-inch or 8-inch or 12-inch telescope, and how much better the image looked and how much more detail you were able to capture. So wishing you the best in your astrophotography endeavors and also wishing you clear skies.